What's going on guys? Expert Records just released a pretty significant update to their Synth Serum. Instead of going through an overview video where I just cover all the features quickly, I thought it might be better to go through each feature in small videos so we could be a little more specific and you could feel comfortable using it. Today, I want to talk about the new Scream filters that were added. You might remember the original Scream filters from Native Instruments Massive. This was kind of the sound of the beginning of dubstep, and now we have it in Serum. The Scream filter is a very iconic sound and best known for making sounds like this. So let's jump in and see what the Scream filter is, take a look at the controls so we feel comfortable using it, and then make that sound. All right, let's get into it. All right, guys, after exploring the screen filters for a little bit, I went ahead and made a sketch for you guys so you could see it in action. So we're gonna talk about it real quick, but let's see what it can do real fast. So I have the track right here that I've used the screen filter on and you can see my automations. We'll get more into the specifics of that as we get through it. All right, let's check this out and see what it can do. I just wanna share a with you. If you've updated your serum, you'll notice that under the filter menu, we've got a couple new options. Today, we'll be talking about the scream filters. So we've got LP and BP, right? So low pass and band pass. The low pass scream filter was made to represent the scream filter from Massive. So that was a low pass filter. And then Steve Duda added the band pass for us because he's such a nice guy. So we're gonna have some new scream filter sounds coming out of serum, but also we can get those classic ones that we love from Massive. Let's go ahead and select the low pass filter as the controls are both the same on both. So let's talk about what these controls do for our scream filter. So the scream filter is a type of a low pass filter with an additional internal feedback added. The scream parameter is going to control the amount of this feedback. Everything else works as expected, but it's worth mentioning that the key tracking by default is turned on. So let's talk about what we need to do to get a sound out of this. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what's going on here. So if I turn up the scream, you don't really see much happening. That is the feedback loop we're talking about, right? But you start to really notice it when you turn up the drive. And also, when you start turning up the cutoff and the resonance, you can really see this guy moving around, right? Let's turn up the drive even more and look at all these different harmonics we're creating. So the trick is going to be automating a lot of these parameters at once to get that sound that we want. Reset this. Let's hear this guy in action now. Let's go ahead and make a quick shape here. So let's go ahead and start applying it to some stuff. So I'll put it on the cutoff. We're getting our basic low pass right now. Now let's start adding the drive and the scream. And again, we're not really hearing much until we start to add that drive in there. And then we're going to get what we want. And now what's really interesting is that we could tune this based on our scream. And remember I said it was key track, so check this out. Let's switch up my octave. Maybe one more down. So we're starting to get some really cool sounds out of this. And this is typically how the screen filter was used most often. So let's drop this down and take a look at the difference in the band pass real fast. And it's all gonna be the exact same. It's just instead of having a low pass, we have a band pass now. So these are gonna be used for different types of sounds. Now that we have a general understanding about how the band pass works and we're comfortable getting a sound out of it, let's jump back into the project and talk about the sound that I made. But before we get into that, I wanna let you guys know that this video is just a taste of what I cover in my full Serum Jumpstart Masterclass back at Warp Academy. If you're ready to get serious about sound design and learn how to confidently make any sound you hear in your head, then this is the course that'll help you do that. You'll learn everything you need to know about making professional quality sounds and becoming a legit power user with Serum. I know it could be frustrating and 
it's low learning a new synth, especially one as complex as this. That's why we used a special technique in this course to help you learn faster and remember more. In less than 30 days, you can master this amazing and powerful synth. Come check out the course and see for yourself. There's a link below the video. All right, here we are back on the session. I want us to be able to see both the automations real fast and Serum at the same time. So let me go ahead and resize and reposition this real fast. So now check out the macros that I made. So we've got the speed, this alarm one, and the pitch one that I'm automating right now. Let's check it out while we watch it, and then we'll do a little bit of a reverse engineer on the sound. <laughs> Awesome. So let's hear what that sounded like actually without any automations. All right, so big difference, big difference. Those automations added a tremendous amount of life to it. All right, so now let's dive into Serum and see what we've done here. So I'll just bring this back to the center and make it a bit bigger so we can have a better view. So while I'm resizing this, let me just mention that I don't usually arbitrarily automate things. I usually set up macros that will add value or playability or something special to my synth. And those are what I automate. So in this patch, other than the scream filter, there's not too much I'm doing that's special. I've got two basic shapes. I have selected the saw wave on them. I've got a unison on oscillator A. I have tuned the oscillator B, two octaves up and five semitones down for my FMing. I think the real power in this preset comes from the macros and the way that I set up the playability of it. But let's go take a listen to what's going on in the effects real fast. So I'm gonna go ahead and solo this track here, okay? And let's go ahead and just leave these guys down so we're not hearing any automation right now. Nice. And let's see what's going on over on the effects. So let's turn these on one at a time real quick and see what's happening. And then we can get into the scream filter. Just a little bit of space here. Nothing too special. I'm not even using the hyper at all. The dioid is going to add a lot of sound for us. This is a really cool thing to do with your scream filter. The distortions are always gonna bring out character in it. And you could choose to use a different model here if you want. The compressor is gonna add the OTT formula. You wanna be sure that your release isn't too closed like mine was. And then I added a little bit of an EQ to get rid of what I thought was just unnecessary. A bit of reverb for space. I'm going to be honest with you, you really can't hear because of the gate that I have here, but it does add a little bit of space. So I'm going to head back over to the oscillator section, and now let's talk about what's going on in the macros. So this one's going to just be the LFO. Cool, cool, cool. And then I got the pitch here, and this guy is going to be going to the drive and the scream and also a little bit on the FM. So you can see that this is going to tune it differently. Check this out. All right, that's pretty rad. So we can get different pitches by moving around the position on the scream and drive knob. And this was a cool alarm effect that I found. And these work really well with each other as well. And this is actually a pitch wiggle that I'm not even using, so we don't need to talk about it. So now that we know what they're doing, let's see them happening one more time real quick. All right, and this is how I get a lot of action out of one bass sound. It sounds like three bass sounds, but the way we're using it together gives it a lot of life and a lot of character. So I encourage you guys to play around with this screen filter. It's a lot of fun. We're gonna make this preset and this session available to download so you guys could check out what I'm doing with my processing, exactly what I'm doing with my automations. You can go and turn the knobs yourself. This should make learning the screen filter as stress-free as possible. I encourage you guys to go ahead and download the session and try to learn from as much as you can.
All right, guys, that about wraps it up for the screen filter. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's one of my favorite new filters inside of Serum as it's kind of nostalgic to me. Remember guys, if you're feeling a little overwhelmed by Serum, don't worry. Stop by the Warp Academy website where you can check out Serum Jumpstart. Me and Dan Larson take you guys through every feature inside of Serum, demystifying everything and giving you the confidence you need to make the sounds that you want. All right, guys, I'll leave a link in the description. Other than that, I'll catch you later. See ya.